Hi Chess Kids, welcome back to YouTube and today we have a little bit of a strange topic. We're going to talk about some of the strange rules that you need to know to avoid losing in chess and sometimes to try to win. Sometimes knowledge of the rules is what's going to make you a successful player and we're going to look at five examples that are all true stories from my own chess games and you're gonna learn from them. Some of these examples only apply to over the board chess, which I hope you're playing, but some also apply to online chess as well. Now here's our first example. I played a game in 1989 when the world was still black and white and it was at the national championship. And we're gonna start out, this is the saddest story by the way. My opponent was clearly winning, I was white. You can see that black has three minor pieces for the rook. This is not the exact position, but to the best of my memory, it was three minor pieces for a rook. Now, it was my opponent's turn, and my opponent offered me a draw on his turn. Not really something that you're supposed to do. Now, my opponent then immediately retracted the draw by saying, nope, nope, I take it back, before I even had a chance to say yes or no. Now, the first thing that I didn't know at the time, you cannot retract a draw offer. This is one thing when you're playing on Chess Kid that is also true. Once you click that draw button, you can't undo it. Your opponent has a chance to accept or decline it. Another thing that's true on Chess Kid, which is the same as over the board chess, I could have told my opponent, make your next move. You actually have until you make your own next move to accept or decline the offer. So I could have said to my opponent, make your next move. And that gives my opponent one chance to really mess up. Who knows, maybe my opponent would have hung a piece. Probably would have still taken the draw though. In any case, remember that. No retracting draw offers, and if your opponent offers a draw on his or her own move, you are legally allowed to tell your opponent to make a move, and then you decide before you make your own next move. Two things that would have saved me. I allowed my opponent to convince me that he was right, even though he wasn't. I went on to lose the game. There was a few tears involved but I learned my lesson. Okay, let's take a look at another rule that can help you in your tournament game. This is one that luckily I knew for over the board chess, you don't have to worry about this one in online chess. In this game, it was played a long time ago and it was played with actual manual chess clocks. We didn't have any increment or any delay. And it was the last game in the last round of the tournament. Here I was playing white and I'm clearly lost. Luckily it's my move, I'm not gonna get forked on the square f5, but I was totally worried about getting forked or skewered here. And with only a few minutes left on my clock, if I tried to keep on playing defense, I might have just lost on time. My opponent also only had about two minutes left. So here's what I did. I played rook captures pawn. Just to get rid of the pawn on the chessboard so my opponent couldn't promote, and to see if my opponent was able to checkmate me with bishop and knight. The king took. Now here was my problem. This was an over the board game, an order to count for the 50 move rule, because my opponent only has 50 moves to try to checkmate me, I would have had to have written down all the moves. But with two minutes left, it's pretty hard to write down 50 moves. So I stopped the clock. That's something that you should know. You're always allowed to stop the clock to get a tournament director or an arbiter. I called over the tournament director and I said, hey, I don't know the rule. Are you allowed to observe the game and count 50 moves in your head on my behalf? Turns out, I was right. The tournament director is allowed to do that, and that's what happened. The tournament director watched us play the rest of the game, and when we got to 50 moves, the tournament director stopped the game and said it was a draw. Now, funny story, the tournament director, who was a friend of mine, kind of conceded to me afterward that he may have made me play 51 moves, okay, but that was a mistake on his part and a different story. So, if you're playing over the board chess, normally you need to write down uh, the 50 moves, but in this case, the tournament director is able to count on your behalf if, you know, there's manpower, right? If there's enough uh, tournament directors to be able to do that for you. On Chess Kid, the website will automatically count for the 50 move rule for you. Okay, if you don't know what the 50 move rule is, go look at my video on Chess Kid about all the different ways to make a draw. Let's move on to our third rule. Now, this one applies to over the board chess and internet chess, and in fact, it just came up in a game very recently with the very popular streamer, Eric Rosen. He used it to trick his opponent. In my case, I almost got tricked. This was at the South Carolina Championship way back in the 1990s. And I had a position like this. I was white and I was totally winning. And I thought, why not be totally, totally winning and play Rook captures pawn? 
Now, do you see the problem with this move? I'll bet you do. Why is this in the rules section? Well, a lot of kids don't know that you are allowed to castle queenside when the B square is attacked because that's not a square that the king uses. Even though this is way back before my king level videos about all the different rules of castling, you'd be surprised how many players don't know this rule. There's a famous story about a grandmaster not knowing this rule. However, I want to give that grandmaster credit. He got up and asked the arbiter the rule. And again, that's one thing I want you kids to know. You're always allowed to ask the tournament director or arbiter a rule when you're playing an over the board chess game. And now you see the problem. Black will castle queenside, magically check the white king, and then the king captures the rook on the next turn and black is winning. So the computer knows that, of course. My website is not going to let you castle if you're not allowed. So remember that rule. The king does not use the B square when you castle queenside. And this really, really strange circumstance does happen one day. And luckily, I avoided playing rook takes pawn. I avoided the trap and I went on to win the game. Okay, let's take a look at our fourth rule. I'm actually going to turn the board around because I was black in this game. And this is not really a rule so much as a, a clever idea. I was playing a grandmaster as black and I played him three straight years in the same tournament all as black. And I knew the exact opening he was going to play. Now, why did what I did? Was it clever? Well, this particular grandmaster, he liked to get up after every move when it wasn't his turn. He liked to walk around, do some other things he probably shouldn't have been doing. But in this case, every time he made a move, I knew exactly what my response was going to be. But I sat there still waiting for him to get up from the board. Then when I made my move, guess what? It took him about three minutes to come back from the board. And I gained two or three minutes every single move out of the opening. I know this sounds like a strange story, but that extra 30 minutes that I ended up acquiring in the opening ended up making it very helpful because I was playing against a grandmaster. I was actually able to get two draws from those three games. So I knew exactly every single one of these moves. But if you could just imagine, I would just sit there. Of course, everybody knows I'm playing bishop g7. I would wait. I would wait. The grandmaster would get up. I'd play bishop g7. He would come back two minutes later. And this, you know, was actually a pretty effective strategy. So not exactly a rule, but, you know, you can use uh, the your knowledge of your opponent against him or her sometimes. OK, so anyway, I kind of like that. Uh, there's no rule that says you have to move right away. So there you go. I made it a rule. OK, and the final rule that we're going to look at today. This was a very, very strange example. I was playing an international master and again, it was the final round and the final game. And again, both of us had about two minutes left. Now, what ended up happening in this game is I did something like attack this pawn and then my opponent guarded the pawn and then I attacked the pawn and then my opponent guarded, you know, and I moved a bishop and like the knight move and the bishop move and the knight move. And the point is, I got kind of lost in all the variations, and I wasn't quite sure if it was a three-fold repetition, but I kind of thought it was. So what I did was, I stopped the clock and I claimed three-fold repetition. Now again, we were using an old school clock. We weren't using delay or anything like that. There was a tournament director watching the game, and the tournament director did exactly what he was supposed to. Instead of actually ruling on whether or not he observed this position happen three times because we weren't writing down the moves anymore, he asked my opponent, this claim of a draw off of a threefold repetition is actually a draw offer. So before I make a ruling, he asked my opponent, would you like to accept this draw? So I hope you guys understood that. When you make a claim like a threefold repetition in a chess game, it is itself a draw offer. Now my opponent didn't answer when he was asked if he agreed to the draw offer, he started thinking and he started thinking some more. And I thought, wait a minute, he's actually thinking about the chess game. He's going to say, no, I don't agree to the draw, but he's using this extra time to think about the position while the clock is stopped. And I was like, hey, you got to say yes or no. So what I did was I took my arms out and I reached my arms over the chessboard to block his view of the board because he was supposed to be thinking about whether or not to accept the draw, not think about how to make an improvement in his chess position. Then, of course, I said, hey, you're an international master. You could be thinking about the game in your head. So anyway, I kept pushing him in a nice way to answer. And finally, he said yes. 
he did agree to the draw offer. So it didn't actually matter if it was a threefold repetition. So I don't even know if that's in the rule book, to be honest with you. Some of these weird situations aren't always covered by the rules, but you know, I, I stood up for myself and I wasn't mean, but I definitely did not let people take advantage of me. And that's part of being a good chess player too. You have to stick up for yourself. And if you're not sure, always ask the tournament director what the rules are. And unlike that first game that I showed you, don't let your opponent convince you of a rule that you either don't know about or deep down you don't think to be true. Okay, I really should have asked the tournament director in the first game I showed you today. And then he would have said, yeah, you can't retract a draw offer, but I didn't know. Now there's a lot more rules that might help you in over the board chess. Those are just a few that have come up in my games. I hope you enjoyed that little trip down memory lane. Luckily, Chess Kid handles most of those rules for you when you play online. But when you go back to Over the Board Chess, make sure you read the rule book and uh, maybe it'll save you in a game or two. Go ahead and subscribe to Chess Kid YouTube and I'll keep making more videos that hopefully you find interesting.